My name is Ms. Alex and I work for the St. John's County Public Library System. Thank you so much for joining me for another edition of Kids Art Lab. Today we are going to be learning about um, an amazing Swedish artist named Hilma Off Klint. So let's go ahead and get started. This is a portrait of Hilma. She was born in 1862 and passed away in 1944. And she was born on October 26th in Stockholm, Sweden. And the reason why Hilma was so groundbreaking um, was because she was more than likely the very first abstract painter that we know of. Um, now in the past, uh, there were several male artists who were kind of considered the first abstract painters, such as Vasily Kandinsky. However, between 1906 and 1915, Hilma created almost 200 abstract paintings just in that short period of time. Um, and those actually predated her male contemporaries who were known for abstract art. Um, because though she rarely showed this artwork um, and she decided that she didn't want to show it anymore during her lifetime and she would not allow anyone to show her artwork until at least 20 years after she died, no one really knew about her artwork. Um, Hilma also did normal or what was considered normal or natural realistic artwork um, to kind of pay the bills and to make money um, but she didn't show off her abstract art because she didn't think the world was ready or would embrace abstract art at that time so it wasn't until 42 42 years later um, that her artwork was exhibited her abstract art, that is, and shown off to the world. So I was really excited to show you this series. Um, it's a series called The Ten Largest. This one is number two in the series, and it's about childhood. She painted it in 1907, um, and this painting is actually 10 feet tall in real life. Um, the whole series spanned from birth, so painting one was at birth, um, painting 10 is at the end of the life, so it's a whole life cycle. Um, and each age and, and gender are assigned different colors, so a lot of Hilma's artwork has to do with assigning um, colors, shapes, symbols, that sort of thing. For example, at the bottom of this painting, those two circles that kind of overlap, they look kind of like a Venn diagram, right? Well, that part in the center is meant to show development, or maybe in this series, some sort of, you know, growing up. Now, this is that same piece of art. You can see it on the left in this photo. Um, but this is a photo of almost the whole series. You can really get a sense of how huge these paintings are. Um, and this was from a show, I believe at the Guggenheim. It was in, I think, 2018, so not that long ago. So her artwork, because it's still rather new-ish in the art world, um, it's still being displayed um, because it's so futuristic, I think, even though it was painting at the very beginning um, of the 1900s. Okay, this painting is called The Seven Pointed Star. She painted it in 1908. It's um, painted with tempera, gouache, it has some graphite on paper, and then that paper is mounted on top of canvas. Um, and this is part of a series of 21 paintings that are all a different representation of the seven pointed star. Now, hang on, you say, hang on. That painting doesn't look like a star, right? No, not necessarily. That's why it's abstract, right? It's not necessarily what we would think of when we think star. Um, however, if you look a little bit closer, um, it reminded me of a flower and you can see that there are seven 
petal shapes that are yellow and seven petal shapes that are blue in this one, um, which kind of corresponds with her color gender thing. Um, blue was often um, femininity or, or female, um, and yellow was often male or masculinity um, in her artwork. So, hmm, interesting. Um, also, the seven-pointed star is symbolic in many, many, many different religions. You can look up um, what that means. And, ah, the swan. Um, I'm talking about the one that's on the right-hand side here. That was painted in 1915, oil on canvas, uh, and was a part of another series all about the swan. Um, this series started with that smaller painting that I have on the left on this slide, and you can see more clearly that there are definitely two swans in that painting, right? You can see them, the white one on top, the black one on the bottom, and they kind of intersect um, on that horizontal line right there in the middle. Now look at that picture and then look at the one on the right. They're both called the swan. You can kind of see how the swans have transformed into the black and white on the painting on the right. And also that line that goes across horizontally in the picture on the left turns and becomes a vertical line up and down in the painting on the right. Um, also the one on the right is made up of circles that are layered together and then with that vertical line drawn through makes it very interesting and kind of plays with, um, with the dimensions of the circle. And this is the one that we are actually going to recreate today. So let's go ahead and make some art. <laughs>
Thanks so much for watching and creating with me today. To check out more programs, events, and classes from our library, please check out our website, sjcpls.org. You can also find those videos on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash sjclibraryvid, as well as our Facebook page, facebook.com slash sjcpls. Thanks. Bye.